Hello everybody, welcome back to the James Lawrence All Court channel. Reporting live, of course, from the Al Janoub Stadium, where France have just pumped Australia after... S Australia scared them. They did scare them, didn't they? Just a little bit. And I'm gonna be honest, it's been a weird day. It's been a really strange day. And I just thought, can we just bloody chew the fat for a second as I walk away from this giant stadium that looks like a vagina? Yes, we can, we can do that. Let's stop here and have a little moment, just a quick moment um, and talk about it because football's great, isn't it? <laughs> Shocks are plenty. What was going on? You've got the greatest upset in footballing history, possibly. It's up there, we've got to talk about it, right? Messi, you know, we all thought he was just gonna fly. Didn't really, really happen. Um, and then I've been to two games today, which are probably games that people won't talk about, but both of them were amazing. And there's a lot of things that kind of being here on the ground, you can kind of see the difference with it all. First of all, Tunisia, Denmark, which I just want to talk about for a second, because they, Tunisia could go through their group. I'm telling you, they could cause another upset because I've never seen so many fans in one place. Like it was unbelievable. Like the noise that they came with uh, and it, it really did. You've, I bet you've all seen this yourselves, haven't you, over the years? You know, that atmosphere affecting the opposition definitely affected Denmark, and it definitely inspired Tunisia quite a bit in that game. They got the draw, they should have scored, and they could have won that game. Denmark, of course, could have as well, but Denmark were, Denmark were iffy, and it was down to the crowd. The next game, I then make my way over to this one. A couple of thoughts on this one, just quickly. And of course, we'll do so much more. Uh, we're going to be talking about the Saudi Arabia game and how they beat Australia in more depth. I'm going to do a, a more tactical thing on it tomorrow. Um, that'll be on the channel. England preview coming as well. Um, but this France game was fascinating in terms of, again, just being able to watch players that the camera won't be on all the time. Griezmann is just so subtle in his play. Every time I watch him on an international level, he's, he's really, really impressive. And then, that front three is actually a little bit iconic, isn't it? You've got Giroud who just bangs in those headers. And again, it was enjoyable to sort of watch him. Now, look, Australia were physically inferior, technically inferior. Um, the superstars in that French team, the depth in that French team as well in terms of the players that came on. And that's with the injuries that they've had and the injury they had uh, for the first goal. They snuck that goal, Australia, and then I was like, wow, it's like, surely this can't happen again. The most impressive thing and the reason why France went behind was that kind of French arrogance and it led to them being a little bit kind of lazy at times but that they were still free-flowing and it was always coming. Mbappe, here's the scariest thing about Mbappe, Mbappe was poor tonight. <laughs> like for, for someone of his level, the guy's supersonic, like seriously. Every time there's a there's a pass to him and you've got the, the, the the mix of that front three of Giroud, who just holds the line and, and occupies centre backs, Mbappe staying wide and, and making those diagonal runs, and then Griezmann who just floats about. The mix of those three and the vision of Griezmann, he's always, always, always looking for Mbappe. But Mbappe should have scored four minimum. If Messi gets those same chances, he scores four goals. And obviously, we're talking about him being unbelievable. If he can finish that little bit better, and I mean, look, he scored a lot of goals, he gets a lot of assists. But he was poor tonight, and that is the scariest thing that you've got to say about France, who kind of chilled out and, and calmly made their way to it. The centre backs I wonder about as well. I think you can get at them. It feels like they sort of defend individually instead of as a partnership. But uh, yeah, Mbappe got in several times, missed about three or four sitters, and still got himself a goal. Um, yeah, France looks scary. That The scariest thing about France is that they can go up three or four levels. But look, it's a bit like England and Iran. Australia are not, nothing impressive. Sorry, Australian fans. But the depth of that French team, I think we're all thinking, oh, they're maybe a little bit cursed. Teo Hernandez is an absolute menace at left back as well. And they're going to be very tough to be once they switch on because I didn't really feel like they were switched on today. I'm going to be going to see more games and we'll talk about it all soon. But it's uh, it's after midnight here and I've got to get home. Um, I'm on Sky Sports News at YouTube channel and Sky Sports Football channel every single morning at 9.30. So we'll be talking about all of this tomorrow or today or whatever it is. So make sure you go and watch that as well. 
Support the channel, subscribe to the channel, and uh, yeah, enjoy your lives in a bit.